anyway, thank you everybody for coming. Getting back, getting back to the topic. Thanks everybody for coming. I love having these bro events. They're a lot of fun, and it's great to have all these people that are excited about bro, which is is really different from the last few years. Which you know, you'd go to a conference, and there'd be a few people here and there that would be excited about bro and want to talk about stuff. And I just, I always love doing the bro events when it's literally everyone in the room uses bro or is going to, or is at the very least excited about thinking about how you can approach network monitoring with bro. Um, so time's going really fast. Uh, this is NCSA. Um, Adam Slagle is gonna be talking next, sort of giving, you know, opening remarks and just sort of talking about the facility and what they do here and would you like to go early? I don't sure. really have a whole lot else to say. So anyway, I'm Seth Hall, um, one of the developers of Bro, and this is Adam Slagle. He's the co-PI on the grant that we're currently finishing up right now. So go ahead, Adam. So we may, I may be starting early, but I'm sure we'll eat that time up soon enough with the exercises. <laughs> uh, so welcome, and thanks for coming. I hope everybody had safe travels here. For those of you who weren't here two years ago, you might be wondering, why are we hosting the Bro Exchange workshop at NCSA again? Besides just the um, beautiful sunshine, the rolling hill, and uh, all the airline options, it turns out I'm a cheap host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but re really, really, we have established this good relationship with XC over the past few years. Uh, and it's really been quite a beneficial collaboration, I think. It started, uh, I think, in 2009. Uh, I approached Robin uh, through Mike Dopheide and about an idea. Um, we were scaling up significantly, moving from doing our one 10 gig connection to you know, well over 100 gigabits for the new data center, and, and really looking at bro scalability issues. And we realized it was a, uh, an opportunity for collaboration. We both, I think, had this vision of, I mean, Bro, it was used in production at places at the time. We had been using it for eight years, but still was largely a, a research piece of software. And we both had this vision of bringing it into the solid production uh, piece of software and really getting it more widely used. And so we got our first uh, engineering award for $3 million then, uh, and I guess that started almost exactly three years ago. And since this, then, this collaboration's only grown. Um, we just recently, I don't know how many noticed, we got an award that's a little more research focused, but there is a transition to practice part. We're doing industrial control security, looking at things like power grids and gas and water, and monitoring that kind of stuff with Bro as well. Uh, and we have partners here at UIC, and there's partners in the Netherlands as well for that. And there's more good stuff in the pipeline that we can't quite talk about yet, but um, we expect this to be a continued and long-term collaboration, I think. So many of you probably do know what NCSA is, but probably just as many of you don't. And its name is a little bit misleading at times. So we are a supercomputing center. I mean, that's in the title, the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. But we're not just supercomputing. I worked, I came here just over 10 years ago. The first five years I was here, I had nothing at all ever interactions with anything to do with supercomputing. Uh, We've become quite a bit more where, I mean, it's still a strong focus. HPCs, high performance computers and supercomputers are a big part of what we do with the Exceed Federation and with Blue Waters, the Petascale computer uh, that you all have a uh, chance to tour Thursday if you want. But um, there's a lot more. There's, there's different focus areas. There's you know, a lot of middleware development, there's visualizations, and there's cybersecurity R&D is another big focus area for us. So, and big data is another one as well. Um, but ultimately, what we are is we're a service organization uh, for the scientific and engineering community. So we are about building and providing and supporting cyber infrastructure for uh, the nation's scientists and engineers, primarily NSF funded, but you know we have DOE funding, NIH funding, and all sorts of other sources as well. And we serve a lot of communities. Mostly in this nation, but you know we also have collaborations in places even in like Cyprus and the Cyprus Institute for Supercomputing. <clears throat> um, like I said, we run resources, but that's not the only thing that we do. 
Uh, we create things as well, a lot of software development. Uh, R&D has been a big part of the NCSA as well over the past several years, and that's, you'll notice we actually are university employees, so we have a lot of collaborations with the professors on campus too, and I think that's what, one of the things that separates us from some similar places, though there are other places like us. Um, I'd say San Diego Supercomputing Center and Pittsburgh are similar, but we each have our sort of focus areas. We're the only ones doing a focus area on cybersecurity, for example. And I think, but I'm not sure, that we're probably the only ones that have been working on IMAX films or things like that with visualization as well. So, but each of these centers, and NICS as well, has their own special focus areas. Uh, you also got a, something in there, in your packets, uh, this big flyer that says cybersecurity on it. And so the directorate that I work in is the cybersecurity directorate. I'm one of the leaders of that uh, directorate, and we just go by the, uh, the acronym CSD. And so CSD um, is a little bit newer than uh, only about five years old. We've been doing cybersecurity at NCSA since the, I'd say the late 90s, mid to late 90s. It really grew out of our network operations and development group. But CSD was really formed only about five years ago. It really, what it took is we had these scatterings of, of security research and development, and then we had our security operations group, and it really was about combining those two things and joining. When I, when I came 10 years ago, I was really under the R&D side, more of a, an applied cryptographer, but I always had strong interests in operational security as well. So I was really happy for sure when we sort of joined forces there and created CSD. Like most of NCSA, um, I'd say we are a little R, big D, R&D shop. Um, we're very focused on applied research. And a lot of what we do came out of the grid computing world. And so in fact, one of our, our pillars of our strength in the cybersecurity directorate is identity management. And a lot of that came from work that we did with PKI and, and X509 certificates uh, out of the grid world. So software like MyProxy, which is uh, one of its functions is as an online certificate authority used by um, computing centers around the world is developed here. Uh, I think it's 13 years old now. Um, a lot of the GSI SSH work uh, and stuff for Globus Toolkit, which is also common in the grid computing world, a lot of that security software came out of the work that we did with grid computing. A newer focus for us, I think, grew out of the more operations side, and that's what you're here for today. So. Uh, our interest in Bro first came about from using it operationally for many years, but since you know joining forces with ICSI a few years ago, I'd say that's become a new strength area for us as well, uh, network security monitoring, and that's become part of our R&D side as well. <coughs> and then I, I think finally we're, we're also, another big interest area for us is um, education training. I don't know if, I don't see Randy here, uh, he was my boss. He was gonna talk a little bit about CTSC, but they're a center that's focused on a, a lot of education and training for the NSF uh, community and helping projects with their cybersecurity needs. We've done training for the FBI several years ago. We hosted a workshop for them and did a project for them. But in, in conclusion, CSD, it's pretty small. We, we hover between about a dozen and 20 employees o over the years. And, with, and because we're small, we focus on these few key areas. Uh, we have our specialties and we try to make a big impact in those little small focus areas. And in, in line with the NCSA, our mission is really about our ultimate customers in the science and engineering communities that we're trying to impact. So a couple of general logistics things. Um, first, you've probably figured this out, most of you by now, but there is a public uh, Wi-Fi. I don't remember the exact SSID, U of I public Wi-Fi, but it's fairly self-explanatory. It's one of the few nice things about the airport here is we have a nice Wi-Fi access and the same free networks available here. If you're from an a university, uh, probably anywhere in the world, you, there's a good chance you can use EduRoam as well. So lots of times I just end up at places like this and find out I'm already on the network. So. If you're from one of those places, I, you might want to try that. There's a few less firewall restrictions, but you should be able to do everything, web browsing, email, SSH, and whatnot on the public Wi-Fi. There's a tour on Thursday. 
uh, after lunch at one o'clock. Uh, the data center is about two and a half miles away, so instead of walking, we'll take uh, two groups on two different buses after the box lunches on Thursday and go over there, and uh, the tour will be about an hour long. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about NCSA or CSD or if there's any problems with the workshop or logistics or anything, please just uh, find me. You'll see me wandering around for the next two and a half days. And finally, oh, there it is. For those of you who are here two years ago, you may have seen these. NSF doesn't like to pay for mugs. It's really hard to get mugs. So I have an original, coveted Generation 2 Bro mug. Fully insulated, nice top. It could be yours. So I'm going to run a little contest here. So if you tweet at, uh, at Bro IDS at our Twitter handle, uh, I think it's Bro underscore IDS, right? Yeah. And hashtag Bro Mug Contest. Do it camel case, no underscores, no dashes, no spaces. Bro mug contest. Guess how many megabytes of compressed bro logs we generate during the course of the um, bro exchange over the next few days, and the person who's closest can have their very own Generation 2 mug. Thank you.